Hey guys, Target here and welcome to another episode of Design and Manage, a City Skylines and modded Let's Play series. We are in New Tadima City and oh boy, is it going to get a complete rework today? Because today we are going to build a completely new road layout for this part of the city, this coastal area that you see right on your screen. Let me give you an overview of what I'm visualizing for the city. Okay guys, so we are sitting on 400,000 uh, simoleons, which give us a very good margin to start um, playing a bit with the layout and start building some roads and testing things out, testing new layouts. And that's what I want to do uh, in this uh, particular episode. In this video, we are completely going to rework this entire part of um, the layout, so this little peninsula and we are going to completely develop this layout. What I'm thinking we could do is, uh, right about on this avenue, it can actually split into two, uh, but instead of being an horizontal road, like what we have here, it could be a semicircle that goes along um, this shape that I'm highlighting with my mouse, so uh, some of these buildings will have to be demolished so that we give room to a more uh, proper layout. And I think this part of the circle can go into a tunnel here and expand to this part of uh, the city, right on the other side of the highway. And here, in the future, we can start building our fishing industry. And I think this area is going to be particularly useful for that because it's really close to the highway and to the railroad, which is going to facilitate transports. On this side, however, the circle is going to go all the way here, then it's going to incur into a vertical line that goes all the way up and will intersect eventually with this highway that will come uh, and cross uh, over here right about at this spot. And then there will be a main highway that will bring traffic all the way over here to this part of the layout. Um, eventually, I will also want to have a bridge uh, in this river. There will be a main bridge that will cross through this little uh, segment of land and will bring traffic to this part of the city and eventually connect with this highway over here. And we might also have another little bridge that will bring traffic to around this part. Now, for the roadblocks themselves, I think I'm going to base them on the semicircle that I'm going to build. So, uh, we are going to have a circle here, and then all the roads are going to be larger uh, semicircles that will be parallel to the main avenue, to the main uh, artery of the city. But yeah, guys, I think that's it. I think that's all I have to say for now. I think it's time to start building. I'll probably not show you any live segments of me building this because I'm expecting this to take me uh, quite a long time to build so I'm going to turn everything into a time lapse and hopefully you will be able to enjoy it a bit more. But enough talking, I'm done warming up, let's get serious. During this time lapse I thought it would be a good opportunity for me to tell you my thought process behind uh, building this layout. So, as you can see, what I'm doing right now is trying to build the circular avenue that is basically going to be a semicircle. And I first defined the center of the circle, that is the first step. And then I've made two guidelines that will represent the ends of um, one of the quarter circles. So, I first defined the first edge to the left side of the layout, so that would be a parallel road to the leftmost road that we already have and then I took the same distance from the central point to that road and I've done the same on the lower part of the layout by adding a segment of a vertical line and I've used the cost of the road to uh, make sure that the distance is exactly the same. Then I simply use the freeform road tool. I found out that if both points that you are connecting have the exact same distance uh, from the central point, the central point of the circle, you will always get a, a very smooth curve, a perfect quarter circle. So right here I had to delete a few housing, a few zoning that was um, intentionally, and I could not avoid that. 
and I will now build the second um, quarter circle on the other side to make it symmetrical. And here now I'm just making some guidelines to figure out what is the middle of each quarter circle. So in other words, to find an eighth of a circle. This is going to be useful to make up the next concentric circles that will be on the outer side of the main avenue. If you're wondering why I use dirt roads for this uh, particular type of tasks, that's because they are cheap to build and cheap to maintain. So because I am playing without any mods and because these roads, most of them are going to be deleted as they are only guidelines, I choose to build with this type of road. I usually go for grids when I'm building layouts because they are one of the most efficient uh, road systems that you can build. That's why they are so um, commonly built in real life. But I also think it's important to add a bit of interest to the city to sometimes adapt a little bit your playing style and your building style and build um, stuff that is more interesting to watch and more aesthetically pleasing. In this case I chose a circular layout or a concentric grid, so to say, because I am building on a little peninsula and I have a very little segment of land to build on the southern part of the layout that you are seeing right now uh, on your screen. Also, I would want the avenue to split into two anyway. I wanted to go and have an avenue that would go on the left side and north uh, because that is the way for the rest of the map where I'm going to build and expand my city to. And I also wanted to add a little road to the right side that will eventually go under the highway that you can see right in the little rightmost corner of your screen. So the plan here was to recycle the layout that we already have, the grid that I've built on the northern part of the city that is now zoned in and make it expand gradually and uh, intersect with the concentric circle. But instead of continuing the roads in a vertical line and merge at a weird angle against the circle, I've decided to add some curves and make every single road connect perpendicular to the circular avenue. And I think the effect and the result was quite nice. To define the points where the roads would connect to the avenue, and to make sure that they would all be equidistant, so they would all have the same distance in between, I simply used the nodes that were automatically created when I created the quarter circle. If you make a big enough quarter circle, you will always have equidistant um, nodes uh, along the road that you can easily see and connect to if you enable the road guidelines. I took those nodes and I have created some perpendicular roads that all share the same length and I simply then connected with the existing grid layout with some curved roads by using the curve tool. Later on I have deleted one portion of the circle and I have made a straight line in order to match up with the terrain a little better. If you look at the right side on the bottom corner you will see that we have a river there and I eventually wanted to create an avenue that would be somehow parallel to the coast. And by doing this and creating a straight line, I think I have managed to achieve that purpose. And then all the roads that I create afterwards that will be parallel to this straight line will also be parallel to the coast and will allow for more efficient zoning. In order to make this layout, I had to buy an additional tile, as you've seen in the start of this time lapse because I am going to expand the layout to that location, or at least part of it. Once I was done with the right side of the layout, I simply done the exact same thing on the left side. Unfortunately, I have a cemetery right in the middle of the layout and I cannot delete it because it has some bodies in it and you cannot, um, you know, get rid of them without emptying the cemetery first. So that was quite unfortunate and that prevented me from building the totality of the layout, but that's something that can be addressed in the future. So it's not really a big deal. Another difference between what I'm making the left side and what I've done on the right side is that I am not going to delete a portion of the circle 
because I want my avenue to go forward in a vertical line because the coast that we have on the left side, you cannot see it in the screen right now, but the coast is also vertical, so I want the avenue to match up with the coastline. Again, this is going to be useful to maximize zoning space and make sure everything is neat and orderly. I then moved on to create the rest of the concentric circles, so in other words, the roads that would be parallel to the main avenue and, and would be used for um, the neighborhoods of the layout. And for this I had to delete our draft roads because they were no longer needed. I started to create three segments of road that were perpendicular to the main avenue and shared the same length. Again, I used the cost of the roads as a guideline to measure the length. I then connected everything with a freeform road tool and again because the length was the same between both segments, I've managed to create a circular road that was perfectly parallel to the main avenue. Then by using the same method, I built additional concentric lines that were all parallel to each other. Then, by extending the perpendicular roads that were intersecting with the main avenue, I was able to create some more road guidelines that will be used for the neighborhoods and to shape our zoning spaces. When I was close to the coastline, I've built a linear road just to break the pattern and to make things a bit more interesting and to adapt to the terrain. And then I just tried to organize and connect everything in a way that would be um, aesthetically pleasing, so to say. All these neighborhoods that we have just built because they have very easy access to the main avenue, I'm thinking that we can turn them into some high density zoning such as commercial or even offices, because we're talking about areas with high volumes of traffic. But then when I moved on to the left side of the map, I was confronted with this very weird shape uh, this kind of a pointy shape and I had to decide uh, what I had to build here. I decided to apply the same logic and continue to build concentric lines which turned out to be a headache because I had uh, very little room to work and to build uh, draft lines that I could use as guidelines. So I just had to make um, random segments of road that were perpendicular to the existing concentric lines and try to make parallel curvy roads uh, by eye. This area, because uh, it's so far away from the avenue, namely the area that is to the leftmost part of the area, I think I'm going to convert this into low density zoning. Then I've just continued by expanding the layouts and because I had a rectangular shape to build upon, I've just resumed and went back to my usual grids. When I finished the main infrastructure of the layout, I then had to decide where I would place the main connections to the avenue. This avenue is going to be the main road of this layout, so this is where all the traffic will flow, and because of that we need to make as little intersections as possible. Because intersections create traffic jams and traffic backups, especially when they have traffic lights. And yes, you could use the junctions tab on the view panel to delete the um, traffic lights, but come on, do you really want to do that? Removing a traffic light in an avenue. How realistic and safe would that be? I prefer to have um, fewer intersections in my avenue and leave a decent space in between them. Usually 30 to 40 blocks. If it's right next to a highway exit, I may even leave 50 blocks or more. In this part I'm just experimenting a few things. The main challenge here is that I wanted to have a main bridge connecting the two margins of the river and I had to decide whether I would make an avenue that would cross um, the existing layout and make a lot of intersections and possibly cause a lot of noise pollution or I could use a more uh, cheaty approach that would be um, using a tunnel to bypass all my problems and run away from my responsibilities. And guess what, that's what I ended up doing, at least for the time being. And that was pretty much it. When I was done with everything, when I've built all the main features of the layout, I then added a few details such as uh, building some bridges to connect two neighborhoods together without crossing the main avenue and, and create an additional intersection, for example, 
or connect the layout to the old part of the layout that was already built without um, causing any awkward shapes so I wanted everything to be as gradual as possible or even to fix some awkward connections such as the coastal road that was built to break the pattern of the concentric layout and here I am trying to visualize uh, what I am going to build in the future. I'm imagining the expansion of the avenue by building a very big curve that will follow along the coastline of the river and will have all its dependent roads built upon this shape. But this is still something that I am trying to figure out. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the time lapse. Back to the past. Okay guys, I just wanted to give you a quick update on what we have built so far and look at this, look at how far we have come. I don't know what you guys think yet, but this is even better than what I had originally visualized for this part of the city. So let me just give you a quick tour of what I have built. So the main road infrastructure is completely done, I don't think I'm going to be placing any more roads here. Uh, the total cost of this build was around 200,000, so we still have a lot of money in the bank. So the main avenue comes all the way over here and splits into two, uh, with the shape of a semicircle, like I've said. I recycled the old layout that we had and had it come at about over here, where it opens up like a flower blooming and goes right into the circle, and then I also continued the roads into the brand new circular layout. So overall I think it blends uh, quite nicely, I think we have a very smooth transition of a grid into a, well, this is also a grid but is a circular grid and I think I've managed to make a very neat uh, transition. But coming back to the main avenue, oh and by the way, I wasn't able to rework this part because we have a cemetery so I have to empty it first and then I can complete this uh, little segment of road that we have missing. But uh, like I've said, we have an avenue coming here via tunnel that will lead to this part of um, the layout when we decide to expand on this. The avenue will come all the way over here. This is all going to be an avenue. This is going to intersect with the main um, highway. And then the avenue and uh, main artery of the city is going to continue up to this part of the layout via this road. The main artery also intersects with another artery, with another avenue at this point that will bring people through this tunnel that I have built, let me show you, to this tunnel that I have built until all the way at this point and here we will have a bridge that will bring people to this part of um, the city on the other side of the river. Now. I'm not sure if I really like this, I think uh, bridges are very useful to um, dissipate traffic. As you can see I have no intersection, uh, no intersections in this road. And by the way this little road is going to be turned into an avenue when we have the need for it. This tunnel is going to be very useful in dissipating traffic but at the same time I like to have my road layouts visible, I like to see the traffic flowing, I like to see, you know, the skeleton of the foundations. But um, I don't know, I, I'm still thinking about it. If it comes to that, I just bring the road uh, all the way to the ground level, to the surface level, and I will rework this part of the layout. But also, let me know, do you like this tunnel or should I bring it uh, upwards? Now moving on to zoning uh, planning. What types of zones am I going to place where? For our original uh, starter layout, because it is surrounded by main arteries and it has very easy access to the highway, I think I'm going to convert this into a high density zone. This is where I'm going to put uh, a lot of high density residential and also commercial. Uh, this area uh, over here, this little district, I think I'm going to dedicate it for offices and also um, some commerce mainly, but I'm still thinking about it. This little gap is intentionally because I think I'm going to put a riverside park over here, you know, filled with trees. I think it's going to look really, really well with um, the buildings that we are going to zone. Now for this area over here, this very long zonable space, 
because we don't have an easy access to an avenue, the only access that we have is this one and also this one here, we need something that is very light in traffic. And because of that, I think I'm going to dedicate this to a low density residential zoning. I think it's going to be really, really cool to have a bunch of little houses zoned in this little suburb with a view to the river. This is going to be our upscale and expensive uh, houses. Perhaps I even turn them into high-tech housing, but I'm still not sure. And the layout will continue to this part of the city. And I still don't know what I'm about to zone here, but probably the same uh, high-density residential that I'm going to zone here. This little segment of road that we have here, it's a little indication that we're going to have another bridge in the future bringing traffic to this uh, little island as well. Well, not island, but to this part of the city. This straight road that we have along the coastline, this one here, I think is going to be useful to place a, a ferry station or a ferry stop. Uh, because we are building our city uh, next to a river, I think ferries are going to be a very important way of transporting people from one side of the river to the other. So what I think I'm going to do is have a ferry line that will bring people to different sides of the city across uh, the river. So we can have a station here, then the next one can be here, uh, the next one then can be there, then another one here. I am still not sure. We'll see how it goes. Now what I want to do before unpausing the simulation and let everything adjust, since we already have all of our roads built, I think it's time for us to plan ahead and start building the pathways as well, because there are some areas that could uh, highly benefit from pathways, for example, uh, this little segment could have a pathway bringing people from this road to this uh, intersection here by building a linear path here, likewise you can do the same on this side, then along the coastline for example I'm thinking we can have a pathway that connects these little dead hands of road, so a pathway going alongside the river bend all the way over here and then curve around this entire residential block. I think it's gonna look really really great. And also a pathway here, a pathway there. So that's something that we can start working on. So I think I'm going to use the red pathways for now. Okay, so I think we want to start with a first pathway here and it connects perfectly but perhaps we can make this look a bit better. By coming all the way here. Okay. I think it's better this way. Let's do the same here, for example. I think we need to bring this uh, little end closer to the intersection so we don't have this weird uh, shape. So perhaps I can do something like this. That will make a note here. And if I do the same here, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, there we go, much better. I think I wanna do the same on this side. I also think in these areas where we have a bigger gap between the avenue and the road, I'll want to have a pathway network, just like um, how we have it over here. So let's bring it all the way here, and hopefully I will be able to curve this without an issue. This is going to be a bit more challenging, because it has a curve, but uh, we'll see. Let's bring it all the way here. Let's see if I deleted any zoning spaces. No, I did not. Perfect. Okay, this is working very nicely. Uh, perhaps we can do the same here. Oh, here we're going to have a problem. But uh, that's fine. We can make a bridge. You know what? I think I'm going to leave this area without any pathways so that we can uh, put a few unique buildings here. I think we have room for it. But for the time being, I'm just going to place a quick access point from this area to this uh, main avenue as well, like here and here as well. 
we will also need a quick access between this district and also this one because we don't have any roads uh, crossing from one side to the other I might even make a bridge in this side from here to here uh, yeah that would be a good a good a good choice but uh, for now let me just uh, build some more pathways give my citizens a bit more options and in this area as you can see I'm leaving a one block gap between the pedestrian pathway and also the road because I'm going to upgrade this into an avenue okay time for the coastal uh, pathway so I think what I want to do is uh, disable all the guides and see what we can come up with All right, we have just made our coastal pathway. Um, it looks a bit weird now, but once we have buildings here and when we have placed a lot of trees and nearby, it will look much better, trust me. And uh, something that I wanna do, I still don't know how this is going to turn out with this um, bridge here. Eventually we will have to rework this path to accommodate for the bridge, but in the meanwhile, we can keep it as it is right now. But something important that we gotta do now is connect um, these segments to these roads because at this point in time there is no connection. Uh, you know what? Something that we could do is actually upgrade these little ends to the final type of road that we are going to have here. Because if I upgrade it here, for example, it's going to create um, a big glitch with a pathway here. So I think we are going to upgrade them to give us a little bit of uh, the sense of what we're going to have so let's just upgrade every single segment and now let's rework the areas that are glitched so this one will have to go and we will pretty much have to rebuild the pathway and I think we can bring it all the way here all the way there okay it's still glitchy let's try this again Okay, so this coastal pathway network is now complete. I ended up doing these little curvy segments to connect the dead ends to the main network. Uh, I think it's going to look good when we have a lot of buildings in this place. It's going to help blend this area a little bit more. But uh, yeah guys, I have everything connected with pathways, so now before I resume the simulation, there is something that I should do, which is uh, rebuild the buildings that I have destroyed. So uh, we have um, the fire station, no need to touch that. Uh, police is also okay. I believe I have deleted the clinic, so we have to build a new one. And I think I'm gonna place it um, in this little area, perhaps. Yeah, and then we can put a second one uh, right about on this corner. We are going to start emptying the cemetery, so what I think I'm gonna do is place um, another cemetery, let's see. This is actually a great fit for it. Uh, let me see, do I really wanna place it here? Yes, why not? It's a great fit, so let's place it. Now we can set this one to empty. Oh, but it's uh, darkened out. Uh, I think it's going to be available when I uh, resume the simulation. I've also deleted my high school, but I think I want to hold on before placing it again because I don't know how many eligible students I will have when I resume the simulation. And finally, I have deleted um, one of the elementary schools, so it was actually over here. I didn't need to delete this one, but there we go. Regarding parks, um, I don't know. I deleted some of them, but let's see how everything develops and um, we'll adjust as necessary. Okay guys, so it's time to resume the simulation and I gotta confess, I am a bit nervous about this because I have disowned a lot of houses, I'm going to have a massive population drop and also a massive income loss, but I believe we will be able to recover from it. So let's just uh, resume the simulation, put everything on 3-speed, 
let's see what happens. Okay, my population got reduced to half. My income got reduced to half. But overall, I think we are good. Uh, let me just uh, also turn on some of these buildings because we are not needing them. Let's see, water. Okay, we can also turn this off. And perhaps we can turn off one of these treatment plants. Yes, yes, that's perfect. Okay, let's even adjust the budget of water. So let's put it at, I don't know, 75%. Maybe 85. Okay, that's okay for now. Power, let's put it at 90. We are still making an income, which is quite nice. So now I think we can... Oh, first and foremost, let me set this thing to empty so we can finish up this layout as soon as possible but since we have the demand I think we can start mass zoning some uh, residential so let's rezone this entire area that we have demolished and I think we can also zone some things here let me just put the pathway here cannot forget about that and let's place some more houses here and finish up this block this residential block and we can start upgrading some roads as well. Oh, and there we go. I've just deleted one of the pathways. And the huge decrease in population also uh, caused a huge lack of workers in this factory. So, so I'm going to simplify and fix the problem in a very simple way, which is this zone all the factories that are abandoned. You're not happy, you move away. Simple as that. Later on we can rebuild this entire area again, so I'm not worried about this. Okay, so our garbage processing capacity is much bigger than our production of garbage, so we can also turn a few of these off for the time being. And that, I believe, will fix it. Okay, yes, much better. Oh, and there you go, look at this. This was easy, the cemetery is now destroyed, so I can now get rid of it and complete the layout, finally. And there you go. Do I have a road there? No, I do not, so I can delete this. I really do not want to upgrade all of these roads to the final roads with trees, because the maintenance cost is going to be very high, but I think I gotta do it. I think I gotta do it for the thumbnail of this video because the grey roads have a much bigger contrast with the grass than these dirt roads. Mm. We'll see, I have to think about that. Okay, so I've been disowning some industry here and there and it seems that uh, our industry is now much more stabilized and we do not have a lack of workers because I've reduced the supply and our demand is also stabilized because we are asking for more residential, so let's start giving our city some more residential. So let's zone this little block and this little block as well. And let's upgrade this thing to a road with trees. Am I going to destroy the pathway? Yes, I am. Hmm, annoying. But that's going to be it for this video. Massive, massive progress today. I am really happy with how everything turned out to be. And I hope you are too. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I also hope this new layout has met your expectations. I would also like to know what you thought about the time lapse. On the last season, I usually had some comments saying that the footage was sped up way too much and you could not um, understand what I was doing and how I was doing it. So today I decided to try something different and I slowed down the footage a little bit and I actually explained uh, what I was doing with a voiceover. 
So also let me know what you thought of it and if it was useful for you to understand my thought process uh, behind building uh, this layout. But that's going to be it for today guys, thank you so much for watching, I will see you again on the next video. Have a nice weekend and as always, have fun!